Hi, and welcome to another installment of At Home Science with me, Leela. Um, coming to you from the Fairbanks Museum, but here at home, and just wanted to share out some of the really cool things that I got to see this last week. And then we're going to work on an activity for Mother's Day. So we're gonna look at some of the plants that we may be using in our project uh, first, and then we'll actually try to put some of that together today as something that you could give to that special person that you would like to give something on Mother's Day. So let's go ahead and start with our screen here sharing and all right, Whoop. so let's go and look at our first thing here. We've got our dandelion. Now, a lot of people consider this a weed and that idea that a, a weed is really just a plant growing where you don't want it. Um, but it's one that I really appreciate. I really like the dandelion. It actually provides a lot of food for our pollinators, those various different insects that we've been talking about over the last couple weeks. This is really important. So I really like dandelions and we're gonna look a little more at their leaves a bit later. All right, another two great plants that I've been seeing in my yard, this first one over here that I'm circling is called gill over the ground or, or ground ivy. This is another one that people may think of as a weed, but again, it's one of those early blooming flowers that's gonna give nectar to our bees, butterflies, and everyone in between. Um, but this one on the other side is actually a common blue violet. Again, something that, um, these are actually the leaves here, um, that have quite a lot of growing in my yard right now. So we're sort of looking at some of the plants that we will use in our Mother's Day activity. All right, now here's one that is further deep into the woods. So you'd have to go right now in the woods where not, not very much is leafing out. You may see a few of these green leaves, but what you'll see quite a lot of, I mean, it just sort of blankets the ground, is something called spring beauty. And these are really gorgeous flowers. Um, and you'll just see a whole bunch of them just for a short while. So if you get out in the woods, you'll notice, you know, there's still a lot of leaf litter. It's gonna look very brown. But then you're gonna see sort of whole, fields almost um, in the woodland area. So go ahead and look for those spring beauties. Um, and then the next one is something we would call red trillium. So this is, I'm seeing it all along the roadsides in the woods. You just have to go a little bit off of um, that gravel and into the woods to find this plant. And it's easy, you've got these three big green leaves and then where the flower is here and actually over here you can see one and here is one that is just in bloom and we're going to look a little more closely at it and what you're seeing is actually the petals haven't fully popped out they should actually be three red points here much like our three petals and so there's something very interesting about this plant where we were talking about those dandelions and violets um, attracting some of our sort of insects that were more common that we think of as pollinators. This one, they also has a different name. There's red trillium and also stinking Benjamin. And so when something stinks, we think of it as smelling not so good, maybe rotten, maybe like, um, you know, just not a not a happy, good smell. And so what, what I want you to do is if you find one of these, go up and take a whiff and think about what might be attracted to this, because it turns out it's actually flies. So we think of what sometimes flies are really attracted to and also beetles. Um, and so it's supposed to smell sort of like something that is rotting out in the woods. And so that's, it's attracting different pollinators. Uh, so it does it very differently and also early in the season. So, you know, there may not be as many bees and butterflies around to pollinate this plant, but this plant is relying on flies, which we've seen a lot of and also um, beetles, which we've seen quite a few of in the last few weeks. All right, so that was our close-up of our red trillium or stinking Benjamin, and now for the insects. Uh, so this is the same insect, but I want you to see it's, here it is flying away. I believe it's called an Eastern comma because I couldn't get it really clear. There's another butterfly that looks, it's got kind of these edgy wings and orange on the inside. There's another one called, the um, question mark. So I think of this as flying punctuation. <laughs> we got an Eastern comma. So it's it, what it 
is um, what that means is on its underwing. So when its wings are closed, there's actually a little silver sort of little half circle or comma on it. It's horizontal, but the idea is that's where it gets its name. And the question mark has that same little silver sort of half circle or, or um, it almost looks like a little hook with a dot at the end. So it looks exactly like a question mark. So this is a butterfly I just saw this week. I was really excited about it. Um, Cause again, warmer weather and sunny days brings out our butterflies. Uh, let's go to our next one. This one, um, again, see all these dandelions that I've left out there. Again, it's feeding what is called a Milbert's tortoise shell. So this is one that has orange and yellow um, and a little bit of spotting, but this is another butterfly that is out right now uh, feeding on those dandelions or basically any um, violets, any of the um, flowers it can find. Uh, but again, we have this really wonderful butterfly that both of these just popped out on Saturday um, and today. Um, so uh, just getting a chance to see those on those sunny days, really look for them between like 10 and three is, is really the time that they like to come out, which is, is very nice. <laughs> They're not, you don't have to wake up super early like birds. You don't have to um, stay out late, maybe like listening to frogs and amphibians, things like that. These guys are midday flyers. All right, so now on to our animals, which I was really excited to see this week. So this is actually, and what I want you to focus on is we're looking at the top of this metal roofed barn right here, and there's this little black looking bird here. It's actually um, a, a pileated woodpecker, and I wanna show you how it gets attention. Uh, so this is a male looking for a female, and think about like when you want attention, sometimes you will be really loud, or maybe you'll find something to make you even louder. Well, this is how our friend, the pileated woodpecker does it. So did you guys hear that? And then it will actually do its call as well. So that was its call at the end. So that's how I, I knew it was, but also because it actually basically hammered away or instead, you know, you were used to them doing that on trees, but it's not going to find any insects on this metal roof and it's not doing it for food. It's doing it for attention to be the loudest male in the area. So let me see if I can just play that first part again, just so you can really hear it hammering away. So there it was just tapping, tapping, tapping away. And it actually echoes as you get further away, you could really still hear that very easily. So that was our woodpecker. Now let's, whoop, let's see. This is a, a field down the road where I was walking and it was probably about 6 p.m. And this might be a sound that you've heard as well. So it kind of sounds maybe like birds, but again, those are actually spring peepers. Those are some of our frogs, our amphibians that are coming out early. They're very tiny. They're about the size of your thumb. They have a little X across their back if you do find one. Um, and they are making, the males are making this loud, loud call, which can be heard everywhere at night this time of year uh, to attract those females. So just like our loud highlighted woodpecker, your spring peeper males are doing the exact same thing. All right, so now we're on to my favorite animal that I just got to spot yesterday. And so I wanna show you guys our garter snake. So this is a young baby garter snake, you'll notice. And um, in terms of thinking about moms, these guys, as soon as they're born, it's a live birth, not from an egg, but a, a live birth, or not from an egg that the mother lays, but she actually gives live birth to these and they are immediately independent. They immediately need to start looking for earthworms or various other insects and things that they can 
um, start feeding on. And what I want you guys to notice is um, I picked it up gently. I'm holding it near the head because anything with a mouth can bite. So I want to be very careful. It has at this point a very small mouth, so it won't um, won't hurt that much, but I want to still be very careful and gentle with it because you can see it's actually wrapping its tail around um, because it's it's nervous, right? I'm, I've picked up a wild animal and I want to be as careful as I can with it. And uh, here, what I want to show you is they actually use their tongue to sort of taste the air or sniff the air, I should say. So you can see that tongue darting out that's tasting the air around it. Um, so again, one of those different behaviors and adaptations. All right, and then our next one is, I wanted to show you how it moved. So I put it on a flat surface, some wood, and it wasn't too keen to move in the beginning, so I had to use my hand a little bit. But look how it goes sideways and forward at the same time, you know, and it's one of those things that really catches your eye, just like a spider, you know, we have this, fear from birth of things that move really quickly like this. And so it's something that will catch your eye. Um, so again, I want to show you one more um, video of movement. Whoops. Let me get to that. There we go. Um, and this one is now, don't worry, no animals were hurt in this production. Um, I just, my dog came over to sniff it and I want you to see how quickly it moves or switches and turns around. So this is again, a very tiny snake and it's on, um, you know, a wood platform, so it doesn't have a lot to grab onto. I wanted to get a film of it on in the grass so you could see how quickly it moved and disappeared into the grass. I wasn't able to, but I was able to get this film. So let's just take a look. So here comes the dog, the dog's nose, and look how quickly it moves and tries to get away, even the shadow, everything about the dog. Um, it's trying to move, and now it feels a little safer. But it's realizing, you know, the dog is still there, I can hear it. But again, just trying to move quickly. And it doesn't have much grip on this wood where it is through sand, rocks, or through the grass. It would have a lot more grip and move a lot faster. So that is our garter snake that I saw this week. Very, very exciting. So I'm going to go ahead and exit out of here and stop sharing. Um, and what I wanted to show you guys, one thing really quickly before we get to our activity, is why the dandelion is called the dandelion. If you've ever noticed, all the leaves around it kind of look like teeth. And the idea is, the way they're shaped like that, dandelion, it means teeth of the lion. So that's sort of like, think of denture as teeth, dandy as teeth, it's French, and it's basically showing you the teeth of the lion, and that's how our dandelion got its name, from its actual leaves, and you can go out and collect up a whole bunch of them, and you're gonna see that same shape, sort of, uh, for every single leaf, kind of like a serrated knife, um, they have these edges on them. So I just wanted you guys to see that and understand why the dandelion has that name. Now I'm gonna pull over some things for our activity. Um, so I'm gonna push this back and grab a few things because we, I went out and collected a whole number of things. All right, so what I wanna show, let's see if we can fold this down again so we can really look. So I was thinking of trying to make something for someone special for next weekend that you could find maybe outside in nature that um, things that were plentiful. So things that we have a lot of right now. I didn't want to take like that red trillium. Well, first of all, <laughs> the red trillium would be kind of a stinky thing to give, right? So we don't want to do that. But also, you know, the spring beauties, these flowers, are ephemeral, they're here for a very short amount of time. I didn't want to pluck a whole bunch of those or pick a whole bunch of those, but what I did do is I got some you know, balsam, some evergreen that was easy to find out in nature, and then I went out and collected a few other things. So went out and collected a whole bunch of dandelions because I have a whole bunch of them. These are all over the place, and so it was easy to collect those and not feel too bad about it. Um, one thing I did want to show you, I did collect one colt's foot because we kept talking about that uh, in the last couple weeks, and I just wanted to show you 
the big difference here, both have yellow heads, right? So it's easy to confuse, but look at the stalks. The stalks are very different. And remember, this one, you're only seeing the plant, no leaves, no greenery. Whereas this one, you're seeing, whoops, those dandelion leaves that we talked about. So you're gonna see, and the stalk is smooth, but you're gonna see those dandelion leaves with this one, whereas not with this one at all. So this is our colt's foot. So I just pulled one up because normally I wouldn't pull those up, but right now I'm seeing a lot of them. So again, plentiful plants I'm going out and collecting. And then remember we saw our um, violets. So I've actually got a couple different colors of violets. So again, I'm collected all of these in little glasses. You could use plastic again, but putting them in water because you want them to stay as fresh as possible for as long as possible. I also have a ton of mint. Mint is a funny thing. So um, someone may have planted it at this the house that I'm living at, but it has a square stem. So you can actually feel it has sides. And I just picked the mint because uh, there's a lot of it. And if you rub it, Oh, it has a great smell. This one has kind of furry leaves, but you rub it, and I thought it would just add a little more smell or scent to um, what I'm gonna put together here. We, some people might call it like a, a swag, but um, there's, you know, the idea is just take some of the things that you have and put them together and kind of have some fun with it. I also got a pine cone, so I might put that in the middle, um, but I might just add, you know, some of these guys in here and make it kind of colorful. And again, just using things that you are finding outside that are plentiful, so there's a lot of them. We don't want to take things that there's only a few of, because um, it's, it's important that we don't take those, but things that we can find that are kind of plentiful right now, I think is a great idea. And so I, I really like our dandelions. You could make a dandelion crown if you wanted to. Um, that would be something fun to use or do. Um, and you can do this any way you want. I'm just sort of sticking them in. Um, but the other thing I want to do is then add some of those really pretty purple flowers. And these all have long um, stalks. I pull, when I plucked them, I pulled them um, right down by the root. And, and again, this is a plant that I have hundreds of right now in my yard. So it's, it's easy for me to um, pull a couple of these and not feel any guilt about depriving some of our um, butterflies, be beetles, uh, bees, things like that of food. So I'm just gonna stick a few more of these in here. But just to see, like you can take something that was kind of, you know, just green and a little brown and add a little color and it can be really beautiful. And it can be a really nice, simple gift. Again, something that's right outdoors, hopefully right in your front yard. Um, some things that you can go and collect and feel really good about. So let's see if we can stick that in there. And because I pulled the colt's foot, I think I'm gonna stick our colt's foot in there. Maybe right in there. Oh, and then we wanted that nice scent. So let's see, we'll add our mint. Hmm. Maybe sort of underneath here. And then I'll go ahead and pull these out. Oh, and I did find some old um, spores or stalks from, um, and I forget which fern it is, but these are, are from ferns. And I just thought this, these were kind of cool too. So I was gonna lay them in. I might cl clip them down in a little bit later, but I just wanna get them in here now so that I can, oops, kind of show you guys what I've made, but I would, you might be able to like tie some of this in a little bit better. But this idea that, it, you know, there's some kind of neat, simple things that you can make using uh, some of the found flowers and objects that are outside right now and bring a little color into the house and bring a little joy to somebody on Mother's Day. So you, you pick the person and, and create something like this for them. And I think it would be a really nice gift and a really nice way of using some of the things and, and discuss, you know, tell them, you know what each of these flowers is and you know what dandelion means. That would be kind of a fun part of your whole project to share on Mother's Day. So I'm gonna pull that to the side and just say, thank you guys so much and feel free to, um, 
let me know if you have any questions or anything like that. I would love to help out. And I'm just hoping to see a whole bunch of more animals uh, next week to share out with you guys. So have a great week and enjoy Mother's Day and take care. Till next time. Bye.